Hi everyone and good afternoon. It's me once again, your girl Sonya Pearson with another edition of All Things Football from a Lady's Perspective. Today is Wednesday, September 27, 2023. Can y'all believe we are in the last Wednesday of the ninth month of this year? Christmas and the holidays will be here before you know it. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you follow me like this video and also subscribe whatever platform you are watching this on so that you can get notifications every single week i'm here every wednesday between six and seven the video will be uploaded and you'll be able to get the recap from the previous nfl week now we are recapping week number three in the great nfl and as always it did not disappoint let me go ahead and start out now about my panthers andy dawson came on the scene and made, in my opinion, a really great start for our team. Now, fans all over, Panthers fans and fans that are not even of us, are basically saying, you know, we drafted Bryce number one. He's not starting. Well, you guys, Bryce has an injury. And he is expected to be out from one to three weeks or I guess whenever he starts to feel better. But in my opinion, y'all, with the O-line that the Panthers have, Bryce's career is not sustainable with that O-line. I mean, they collapse left and right. So Andy is tried and true. He's a vet. Y'all may disagree. He's, you know, his physicality is a little larger. So he can take those hits that a subpar O-line like ours has when Bryce probably can't. And let's face it, Bryce does need to learn our playbook or at least a lot of the plays. I know y'all saw him line up incorrectly the other day. So... That's my spill on the Panthers. While I'm at it, y'all go ahead and feel free to tag, uh, let's see what his handle is, Steak Shapiro, 92.9 The Game. This morning, now I live here in Atlanta, and I was listening to 92.9 The Game, and he had the absolute nerve in his NFL recap to basically speak on the Panthers and talk about how the NFC South is very competitive. Yes, they are, but it's anybody's game at this time. Yes, we are. And I say, yes, they are, because that's how he phrased us. Like, they are being Tampa, New Orleans, and Atlanta. And he literally came out of his mouth to say, Carolina is the worst team in the league right now. So, go ahead and tag him in this. Matter of fact, I'll hashtag his name. Where are your facts on that? How do you feel like we are the worst team in the entire NFL? Like, that's saying a lot. And I'm a factual person. Now, we may not look as good, but we clearly are not the worst team out of 30 teams in the NFL, sir. So um, feel free to get at me. You can even um, mention me, and I'll be listening the remainder of the week to see what you have to say, Mr. Shapiro. And um, in case you forgot, y'all got to come to Charlotte in a few more weeks where we can get back at y'all. But anyway, moving along, sports recaps. Y'all, I have to start out. With that freaking Miami Dolphins Broncos from Denver's game. Oh my God. I didn't get a chance to watch it. And so when the scores were popping up, I was just like, oh, that's got to be a typo. Quickly went to the ESPN app. Was no typo. 70 to 20. Dolphins all over the Broncos. I mean, y'all, I didn't even know that Dolphins could lasso Broncos. But they did. And... They humbled them, okay? Last time there was a score that significantly was 1966. And um, I don't remember the two teams, but let's be clear. Russell Wilson and Sean Payton clearly are not on the same team. I honestly don't think bringing Sean Payton in at this point was even anything to even help that team, that franchise, whatever you want to say. Um, y'all may, you know, prove me wrong, but I feel bad for Broncos fans. A 70 to 20 lassoing, okay? Whew, that's that score, and that's all I'm going to say on that. Giants fall to the 49ers. We're not surprised. 30 to 12 in an NFC matchup. The Falcons and Lions game, I told y'all in a couple episodes before, Dan Campbell is going to be that comeback coach of the year. They get it done. Falcons look like they did not even show up. B. John Robinson was held to a mere 33 yards. And y'all know I love me some B. John. Like, he is bomb, okay? I wish the Panthers had him. But 
They didn't even show up. 20 to 6. Lions getting it done. Lions do eat birds. Okay? Cats eat birds. Lions eat birds. Whatever. <laughs> San Diego Chargers eking by the Minnesota Vikings. 28 to 24. The Packers and Saints game. Oof. I'm so happy. Packers barely won, but a win is a win. 1.1817. Old in New Orleans Saints. Nobody in the South is undefeated anymore, y'all. All of them caught that L this past week. And so now we only one part, one game away from them Panthers, you know? So we just, we're not that far behind. Texans, were we surprised? CJ Stroud finally showing and proving that he is the quarterback for that franchise. 37 to 17 over the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Tennessee Titans and Cleveland Browns game. Derrick Henry humbled by the Cleveland Browns, 27-3. to The Buffalo Bills over the Commanders, 37-3. to The Indianapolis Colts getting it done over the Baltimore Ravens, and I was shocked about that. 22-19 to because, you know, your boy Anthony Richardson is not in. The New England Patriots, 15 over the Jets. The Jets continue to just, you know, go down that deep tunnel. Aaron Rodgers was on uh, first take, excuse me, get up this morning. Talking about how important it was for them to stay cohesive. You know, even though he's recovering from an injury, he knows that basically he's the leader that they need. And he's not there, so yeah, nothing's happening. <sighs> Panthers-Seahawks game. Y'all, we were in it. And once again, we were not. Now, y'all probably don't remember, but a few years ago, we had that let off the gas mentality when we would get to the fourth quarter and lose. This happened again. It looked like we got blown out when really the game was tied for quite a while. And we even had to lead once. Seahawks, Geno Smith and crew got it done over us 37 to 27. The Chicago Bears, y'all know what my word is, Molly Wap by Kansas City. And the Chiefs, 41 to 10. Taylor Swift made her debut with Mama Kelsey up there. And, um, you know... Basically, Travis is saying that's his personal business. But, hey, I saw Taylor up there in the stands, and everybody knows she's an Eagles fan. But she was wearing that red and white on Sunday up there in the press box with Mama Kelsey, supporting her, at least I can say, her friend Travis. So, kudos to them. I'm, a, I'm so pro-love, and I'm happy for Travis. The Dallas Cowboys, whoo, are y'all all right out there, Cowboy Nation? They took that L, y'all. To none other than the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I don't know if they hurt because they just took the L or because it was to Arizona. Uh, Kyler Murray is not playing. So, um, what happened? Does he still have a job? Because they got on to the Cowboys and they did not let up. 28-16. to 16. Pittsburgh Steelers. Raiders game. Little little rivalry there. 23 Steelers got done. Over the Vegas Raiders, 18. The Philadelphia Eagles went ahead and gave the NFC style Tampa Bay, Baker Mayfield and company that L, 25 to 11. The Rams barely fell to my boys. And guess what, y'all? Joe Burrow was back. And I hate that I did not bet on the Bengals in my pickums because I'm always with that nation, that who they nation that is. Well, anyway. The Bengals ended up winning 19 to 16. Now, Joe is not completely recovered, but he was out there and he's showing proof. Joe Mixon. Oh, and let me back up real quick. Kenneth Walker III. That dude put all kind of yards up on the Panthers. So if y'all had him for your fantasy, you really racked up on the points this week. Now, tomorrow night is going to be Thursday night football. And I know you all are going to be excited about who is playing and all that good stuff. Don't forget that it's going to be on Amazon Prime tomorrow at 8.15 p.m. Where the Detroit Lions will take on the Green Bay Packers. It's an NFC North matchup. So both of them are coming into this matchup at 2-1. and one. It's going to be really important to see how that goes down. So um, let's go ahead and look at your fantasy people like I always like to tell you guys for this week so you can know who to switch out and all that good stuff um keep joe burrow on your sketchy list we're not sure yet if he is going to be you know the person he is supposed to be or not so people to look for coming up um like basically like who to panic and you know who to leave and all that good stuff you want to make sure that you are following the news on ESPN and NFL Plus or regular NFL or just google these people because listen that stuff is going to be out there on a regular basis. So let me check and see for the NFL Week 4 Fantasy Rankings so you guys will know who to put up. All right. And here we go. 
You want to keep Raheem Mostert, a must start. Um, Nathan Jenks fantasy rankings have been decent. Um, and I need to get you guys the roster. So the, the top quarterbacks, as I always talk to you all about first, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, Anthony Richardson is questionable, but if he comes back, there you go. Tua Tagovailoa, guess what, y'all? I got his name right. Kirk Cousins, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Justin Fields are all in our top 10. If you got Russell Wilson, he's putting up the points, even though they are taking those L's. Now, the next people we're going to look at over here are our wide receivers. Let's see what we got going here. And feel free to drop your comments um, in these chats. I love comments. I love the feedback. And, um, you know, I just I just love it. You know, it's, it's a good vibe. I love football. All right, the wide receiver rankings for this week are going to be Justin Jefferson. They're going to be Tyreek Hill, Jamar Chase, Keenan Allen, Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, Amon Ross St. Brown, and A.J. Brown. Now, it's shocking because Kenneth Walker III put up those points, so you guys may be on the lookout for him. Now, next we'll cover our tight ends. And for that defense, it's always a question mark with that. Travis Kelsey, as always, is at the top of the tight end rankings. TJ Hawkinson, Mark Andrews, George Kittles, Darren Walker, Sam Laporta, he definitely was getting it done, Evan Ingram, and Dallas Gordert. Now, go ahead and get those picks in now because tomorrow night is the night that we're going to make sure that we stand on standby for all of that. I got to make sure I got all the news that I want to talk to you guys about um, before I log off of here for this evening. And uh, just to make sure nothing else is going down. Now, I wanted to tell you all about somebody last last week, and I literally forgot. Um, so let me go ahead and clarify that now. And if these videos ever get um, cut off, it is because... Um, Sometimes, you know, social media stuff just cuts you on off and you just be like, oh, what? And you've already posted it. So I want to let y'all know Kareem Hunt got re-signed uh, to the Browns. So that was what was supposed to be going on last week. And one correction, it was not the offensive coordinator of the Chicago Bears. It was the defensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears who resigned. So um, I don't know. Drop me your thoughts. Tell me about your team. Tell me about what you think is going to happen coming up. Tell me your pick -ems. Tell me your top fantasy players. And as always, thank you for joining me tonight and have a great week. Good luck to your team. And as always, go Panthers.